On 28 April 1977, the 601st Civil Engineering Squadron at Sembach Air Base, Germany, conducted a rapid runway repair or triple R exercise. Air Force criteria requires the repair of three craters in four hours. A site survey was accomplished to determine which craters required repair so as to provide a 50 by 5,000 foot aircraft launch strip. The exercise began at 12 o'clock. Temperature 55 degrees, humidity 51 percent with winds at 8 knots. During the approximate four hour exercise, a single simulated crater was repaired. Triple R personnel wore the M17A1 protective mask, the M6A2 hood, the United Kingdom chemical warfare overgarment, the U.S. toxicological M3 booties, rubber gloves, and cotton glove inserts. The objectives of the test were to determine the effects of wearing the gas mask and chemical ensemble on personnel, equipment operations, and timeliness for accomplishing the crater repair. The wear of chemical protective equipment hampers normal routine actions as shown by the operator attempting to adjust his helmet. Each designated triple R base is authorized three dozers for rapid runway repair. Operation of heavy equipment is also hampered with the wear of the mask, booties and gloves. Although cumbersome, practice with the use of these items minimizes their impact. The dozer is used primarily to push and compact fill material into the crater. This portion of the film shows additional equipment arriving on the scene. Each triple R base is authorized three graders, seven front end loaders with three forklift adapter attachments, arm tractors, two rotary toad sweepers, two vacuum sweepers, 15 dump trucks, plus three tractor trailer combinations. The AM2 matting patch repair kit was transported on a flatbed trailer. A crater supervisor with a portable radio supervised the positioning of the triple R equipment. To communicate, the operator had to hold the radio close to his mask to be able to hear and up to the speaking port to talk. In the background, the support trailer arrived holding the majority of the small equipment. A grader is used to clear off the AM2 mat assembly area. All debris will be cleared from the area so that a clear level space will be available on which to assemble the patch. A standing position allows increased viewing capability. However, in looking down to check his blade angle and height, the mask has a tendency to choke the operator. Spotters, extensive hand communications, and increased head movement are required by the operator for safe equipment operations. In the background, the front end loader is simulating pushing reusable debris back into the simulated crater. The triple R mat laying crew consists of approximately 11 to 17 personnel. A triple R team is composed of 87 personnel. It includes supervisors, equipment operators, and mat layers. In a normal exercise, 10 minutes is allotted for mat assembly area cleanup, either by toads, vacuum sweeper, or by hand. Five-ton dump trucks are used to transport select fill. USAFE criteria requires two feet of select fill per crater. For exercise purposes, 24 loads are required. The dump trucks are actually driven between the crater location and the fill stockpile, which is normally located in close proximity to the flight line area. The matting kit is now unloaded from the flatbed. The trailer contains the matting and equipment for the assembly of one complete patch. One of the front end loaders equipped with forks unloads the matting and transports it to the cleared mat assembly area. With the mask and gloves, operation of the forklift and communications are impaired. With use of a spotter and hand communications, the operation can be successfully accomplished. AM2 matting comes in two lengths six feet and 12 feet, and weighs approximately 54 and 116 pounds respectively. Here, the ramp panels are being unloaded and taken to the mat assembly area. 
The crater supervisor monitors the dumping of select fill at the simulated crater location as marked by the plastic cones. The truck simulated dumping the fill material and returned to the fill stockpile for actual dumping and reloading. Now, the keyway, or starting bar for the patch, is being unloaded from the truck. It is the backbone of the patch and is the first item to be assembled. It will be put together on the mat assembly area. The keyway also comes in 6 and 12 foot sections. The M3 gloves used in this test were cumbersome. Wearing of the mask, canteen and ensemble further complicated the assembly of an already cumbersome mat assembly. Due to the increased difficulty in assembling items with the suit and mask on, individuals become greatly frustrated. This tends to increase the time required to accomplish the job. With training and practice, the task can be accomplished, but in a greater period of time. Here you see the initial attaching of the matting to the keyway. The matting will be assembled on both sides of the keyway. The final patch will have 15 rows of panels on one side of the keyway, 20 on the other. The first row of matting on one side of the keyway is now being assembled. Each row consists of four 12-foot sheets plus one 6-foot sheet. The mat assemblers need to work at a slower but steady pace to conserve energy and prevent heat prostration. Additionally, a potential safety condition exists with mat layers not being able to see their feet due to restrictive mask lenses. The rear ramps are now attached to the patch. They can be assembled prior to pulling the patch into place. Medical and safety personnel were on site during the test to identify any health and safety problems. Medical personnel were concerned about dehydration. All personnel were given two rest breaks to drink water. Here, personnel are taking a drink through the M17A1 mask from the canteen via a drinking tube. Use of the buddy system is recommended. Shown here is the mandrel and tow tube kit being assembled on the side of the patch. It is used to provide lateral stability for side movements. Only one of the two mandrel and tow tube kits were installed during the exercise. A forklift is shown delivering the towing mechanism and slings. These will then be hooked to the forward edge of the patch. The patch with trailing edge ramps is then pulled into place with two front end loaders. The patch may also be pulled with a grater in low gear. The tow cables are then pulled tight to remove the slack prior to pulling the patch over the repaired area. In essence, the front end loaders will be driving over the filled crater, pulling the patch so that it completely covers the filled crater. The completed patch with ramps measures 77 and a half feet long by 54 feet wide. Once the patch is pulled into place, the front ramps can be hooked on. This task must be completed before the drilling operation can be started to anchor the patch to the pavement surface. Problems encountered with the gas mask included reduced depth and peripheral vision, pressure, discomfort, lower mask valve problems due to pooling of perspiration, fogging of the lens, reduced communication capability, and choking due to looking down during equipment operations. Heat buildup in the suit and mask required personnel to work slower than normal. Individuals need to learn to work at a slower but steady pace. Leather work gloves over the rubber gloves are required for handling materials such as AM2 matting to prevent tearing of the rubber gloves. Only one piece of matting was handled at a time. Normally, matting operations include several simultaneous operations. The mask required personnel to use a great deal of hand communications. The front ramps are hooked into the mat groove, put down into place, 
and locked together. Again, connecting the ramps together is a problem due to the glove's invisibility with the mask. Ramps provide a graduated transition between the concrete runway and the AM2 matting patch. 54 holes are drilled down through the pre-drilled ramp panels at least three inches into the concrete. For exercise purposes, a hole was drilled into concrete off to the side of the exercise crater. Preheated lead sulfur compound is poured into the holes and bolts pushed in head first through the ramp. Nuts are placed on and tightened down to hold the ramp in place. If need be, the bolts would be ground off flush with the surface with a disc sander. This chemical triple R exercise was the first of its type. Although some minor health and safety problems were identified, overall the effects of wearing chemical protective suits and masks on triple R personnel during operations did not present any insurmountable problems under the test conditions.